Welcome back to the Motherland Channel. In times of uncertainty and potential crisis, many individuals turn to prepping as a means of ensuring their survival and well-being of their loved ones. While prepping is a personal choice and a way to take control of one's own preparedness, there have been concerns about the role of government agencies in such scenarios. In this video, we'll explore the topic of FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, and the potential confiscation of prepping items when SHTF. It's important to approach this subject with critical thinking and an open mind. The intention is not to spread fear or paranoia, but to be prepared for only focusing on prepping here. The list of items we'll discuss is not based on any official statement from FEMA, but it is a real concern. So, how concerned should we all be? FEMA's power to confiscate stuff. Within the United States, a comprehensive collection of executive orders has been established over the course of several decades. These orders serve to empower FEMA with extensive executive authority in the event of a national emergency or crisis. One notable executive order is EO-12148, signed by President Carter. According to this order, the Director of Federal Emergency Management assumes the responsibility of representing the President and coordinating with state and local governments, as well as the private sector. Their primary objective is to foster active participation in civil emergency preparedness, mitigation, response, and recovery programs. By actively engaging various stakeholders, FEMA aims to enhance the nation's ability to effectively address emergencies and safeguard the well-being of its citizens. Another significant executive order is EO-10998, which was issued during President Kennedy's administration. This order provides specific definitions related to emergency measures. In the context of this order, food resources encompass a broad range of commodities and products that are suitable for consumption by humans and animals. It includes not only basic food items, but also substances such as starches, sugars, vegetable and animal fats and oils, cotton, tobacco, wool, mohair, hemp, flax fiber, and naval stores. However, it's important to know that once these materials cease to be recognized as agricultural commodities or products, they no longer fall under the scope of food resources. EO-10998 defines farm equipment as machinery equipment and repair parts primarily intended for use in agricultural activities associated with the production or preparation of food resources. Additionally, the order clarifies that fertilizer refers to any product or combination of products specifically designed for plant nutrition and distributed to users. Lastly, Food resource facilities encompass the infrastructure including plants, machinery, vehicles, including those used on farms and other related facilities involved in the production, processing, distribution, and storage, including cold storage, of food resources. Furthermore, these facilities also handle domestic distribution of farm equipment and fertilizer. Another executive order is EO-10995 which provides FEMA with the authority to assume control over all communications and media platforms during emergencies. This includes the ability to regulate and direct the dissemination of information to ensure an organized and coordinated response to the crisis. And finally, there's Executive Order 10997, which grants FEMA the power to take control of fuel and various forms of power. This authority enables FEMA to coordinate and manage the allocation and distribution of fuel resources, as well as exercise control over different energy sources, in order to effectively address emergency situations. So now that we know that FEMA has the power to confiscate stuff, what are they likely going to seize when SHTF? Generators Generators serve as invaluable assets during times of crisis, providing a source of power when traditional electrical infrastructure is compromised. However, it's essential to recognize that their operation can attract attention, including that of FEMA, particularly in light of the powers granted to the agency under EO-10997. 
As per the executive order, FEMA holds federal authority to requisition various forms of fuel and power necessary to fulfill their mission in emergency situations. This encompassing power extends to generators, which FEMA could potentially identify based on their noise or other detection methods, even from a significant distance. During disasters, FEMA is known to establish camps to accommodate affected individuals and facilitate response operations. It is conceivable that these camps may require a reliable power supply for various purposes, such as providing energy for critical infrastructure, medical facilities, and communication systems. Consequently, FEMA may exercise their authority to seize power sources, including generators, to fulfill these needs. Fuel in times of crisis, the availability of fuel becomes a crucial factor in determining one's ability to navigate and respond effectively. Whether it's gasoline, diesel, or other types of fuel, its significance cannot be overstated. When a disaster strikes and you bring fuel into an affected area, it becomes a finite resource upon which you rely. Powers essential equipment, vehicles, and generators, enabling you to sustain yourself and meet your basic needs. However, once your fuel reserves are depleted, you are left with limited options. Either evacuate the area or search for additional fuel sources. During such circumstances, FEMA, empowered by various executive orders, may develop an interest in your fuel stockpile. Given their authority, they possess the ability to requisition fuel to support their operations, particularly when it comes to fueling their vehicles providing energy for critical infrastructure and facilitating emergency response efforts. This means that your fuel reserves, painstakingly accumulated for emergency situations, could potentially be subject to confiscation. Weapons While there are limited precedents for such actions, instances of weapons being seized have occurred in specific circumstances, such as in New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina and in Boston following the Marathon bombing. These incidences have raised concerns and sparked debates about the balance between individual rights and public safety. In the event of a major crisis, FEMA, as a federal agency tasked with emergency response, may face the challenging task of maintaining order and ensuring public safety. It's possible that they may seek to disarm individuals and collect firearms, aiming to prevent potential misuse or acts of violence during the emergency response and recovery phase. The issue becomes complex when considering constitutional rights, particularly the protections provided by the Second Amendment. But in the face of an emergency, FEMA might argue that the temporary suspension or restriction of certain rights, including the Second Amendment, is necessary for the greater public good and the effective management of the crisis. Radios and Communication Devices As previously established, FEMA has legal backing for confiscating communication devices. The conspicuousness of a large antenna on your truck may attract FEMA's attention. The magnitude of the disaster often correlates with FEMA's increased need or desire for additional resources. They would highly value reliable communication tools like Baofeng radios or powerful ham systems to augment their communication operations. Considering the potential confiscation of such items, it becomes pertinent to review the storage methods for ham radios evaluate whether it's necessary to adopt more covert means of utilizing and safeguarding them. Medical Supplies FEMA will take measures to procure medical equipment and medicines, confiscating items they deem essential from your medical stockpiles. Medical supplies are even more vulnerable than food because if FEMA determines you to be healthy, they may consider your medical preps unnecessary and seize them. While they must leave you some food to sustain yourself, they may approach medical supplies differently. Food As mentioned earlier, FEMA possesses the authority and intent to not only take away food, but also take control of farms. Once they acquire food resources, they determine how the distribution will occur. Imagining all your store food being taken away in an emergency is distressing particularly after years of preparation. People who are unconcerned about you and your family may be the ones taking your provisions. 
Thus, it becomes crucial to maximize the utilization of multiple hidden storage locations. If our genuine intention is to help during a crisis, we may need to relinquish a portion of our visible food storage to FEMA while secretly preserving the majority of our stockpile in hidden locations. Bottled Water Water is an indispensable resource in any disaster scenario. Having a sufficient supply of bottled water is critical. It's recommended to store at least one gallon of water per person per day for a minimum of three days, counting for both drinking and sanitation needs. Additionally, understanding water filtration methods is crucial. In some situations, stored water may become depleted, requiring the utilization of alternative water sources. Learning about various filtration techniques such as using water filters or purification tablets can help ensure the safety of water collected from natural sources like rainfall, rivers, or lakes. It's essential to familiarize yourself with proper filtration procedures to minimize the risk of waterborne illnesses. During a disaster, contamination of local water sources is a common occurrence. Public water systems may become compromised, making the water in your home the only viable option for consumption. In such situations, the availability of your stored water becomes invaluable. However, it's important to recognize that FEMA may seize your water reserve, so keep a portion hidden to ensure your family's needs are met. As standing in line for a bottle of water from your own pre-purchase case can be infuriating. The Void Left by the Absence of Civil Defense Civil Defense in the United States was a comprehensive preparedness plan that was designed by and for the people. It served as a brilliant framework to ensure the safety and well-being of the nation. However, with the end of the Cold War, American civil defense gradually faded into obscurity, leading to a shift in focus towards a sense of perpetual security and prosperity solely reliant on the country's formidable military capabilities. Unfortunately, the absence of civil defense has left a void that's been filled with various responses, including individual prepping, panic, and divisive blame within our nation. In the absence of a centralized civil defense system, agencies such as FEMA and DHS have emerged to assume the responsibility of keeping us safe from both perceived and actual threats, including the specter of natural disasters and the notion of unseen enemies. The significant powers vested in FEMA are a consequence of our collective abdication of responsibility as American citizens. In our pursuit of immediate gratification and complacency, we've prioritized entertainment and leisure over the imperative of preparedness for future disasters. Consequently, FEMA and other emergency response agencies have been burdened with the arduous task of compensating for our lack of readiness. Based on personal experiences and insights shared by fellow preppers who have interacted with FEMA, it's evident that the agency's effectiveness is often questioned. While FEMA plays a critical role in disaster response, it can never match the effectiveness of prepared communities and neighboring communities that rally together in times of crisis. And that wraps it up for today. If you found this video helpful, share it with your friends, give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe and click on the little bell notification too for more valuable content. Till next time, thanks, and God bless.